hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel guys today i'm going to be taking you guys through the process of how gari is being made and it's a rainy day here in lagos nigeria can you guys see the rain yes it's so raining and it's so cold here so i've been procrastinating about making this video and every time it's been raining or it's too sunny and i'm like you know what today i'm just going to do this video so if you've been eating gari all this while and you don't know the stress that goes into this thing i want to take you through the process of how gari is made from start to finish everything that you need to know about how gari is made you learn it from this video so if you're liking this video so far please don't forget to subscribe hit the like button turn on your notification button and let's get started guys let me first show you what cassava looks like cassava is the only ingredient needed for making gari and this is a cassava farm this one is the green species of cassava and i'm just moving towards the red species of cassava this is the two popular types of cassava that i know there are other species that i i've been hearing about but i've never seen so it takes about six to one here for a cassava to be fully matured for it to be harvested and i got a farmer to uproot one cassava so you guys can see what uprooting cassava in a farm looks like she started by using her hand and she wasn't able to use her hand to uproot it she had to go get a hole and here she's just digging the sand all around the cassava before she'll be able to fully operate it and yes we have one out already and she's just going to pull the stem of the cassava and it to come out just like this so this is all it takes for you to operate a cassava and this is a cassava so the first thing they usually do is to start peeling it just like this i don't know if i'm doing this thing right but i remember that um way back as a child i had to peel a lot of cassava because my parents used to make their own gari themselves mine is very rough if you see the one that is down here compared to mine mine sure looks like mine looks like an amateur peeling um cassava i don't know why is it me am i the drama or the cassava is the drama <laughs> mom let me do something your knife It seems as if I'm the only one struggling with peeling my cassava because you can see how beautiful this cassava that this woman here is peeling is looking. Mine is looking so rough. Anyways, I noticed that the method she's using her to peel her cassava is different from the method that the other woman beside her is using. And I was told that the older the cassava, the harder it is to peel it. So she's using this method to peel her own because it is much easier to peel a cassava that is older and stronger using this method. Ma, did I peel this thing well? It's ugly, Abby. Eh? It's ugly. <laughs> She's saying it's ugly. I didn't peel it well. <laughs> oh, goodness. It feels as if I ruined this one. I was thinking I was very good at peeling uh, cassava because I know how to peel yam very well. Yes, okay. I thought it was easy, but it's not easy because I've been peeling one cassava and she has peeled over three. Yes, you always think that it's easy until you try it. Ma, see the one I did. Oh. It's ugly. Oh. It's not fine, Abby. So the next step after peeling it is to wash it. And I'm just doing the first washing here by using a sack. It's like a sponge to wash the cassava, make sure that it's thoroughly clean. And then I'll transfer it into this container here. And when I'm done washing this one, I'll go ahead and raise that before we move on to the grinding stage. So I'm just learning something new because I noticed that my hand is like st sticky. And I'm told that when you wash a lot of cassava, your hand will become sticky because I don't know how to explain it, but it's like very sticky. Yes, it's like starchy, sticky. So it's a starch from the cassava that would actually make your hands start feeling sticky. Man, this cassava is very big old. Uh, just like, even bigger than the yam here. Yeah, it looks like yam. Can you guys see this one? See how big this one is. <laughs> it looks like a very big yam. This one is not big. It's big oh. See, it's, it's, it's very big. Like, can you guys see this? 
And she's saying it's not big, that if I see big one, this one is big to me, oh. Very big, self. See this one as well. Let me carry this one. See this one as well. It's like one whole. When, when, when I take you say my your my go fill your room. This is what you mean. Can you hear all the nonsense this one is saying that when Techno said my cassava go shift your womb, that this is what he means? You're crazy. <laughs> so we are done washing the cassava and the next step is to start um, grinding it in the very, 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 very massive grinding machine which is over here. And this is my assistant. She's hiding her face away from you guys. <laughs> so this one is the metal grinding machine, um, but we have discontinued using this one in our factory. <laughs> and um, she now uses this one to grind it. This one is a wooden made, is it wooden made? Locally made wooden grinding machine. And this is how it's connected over here. Let me just step back a little bit. And after we turned on the grinding machine, we started transferring some cassava into the grinder and it was grinding so fast. So I had to use a stick to remove the gari into a bowl and while another woman was in charge of mixing palm oil into the gari. So the difference between the yellow gari in the market and the white gari is that after it has been blended, palm oil will be added into it mixed properly before transferring into a bag so the only difference like i mentioned is the palm oil that is in the yellow gary and there is no palm oil in the white gary that's why the yellow gary is yellow and the white gary is white and once she was done mixing it she transferred it into a bag and then she would just set it aside and she would go ahead and keep mixing other gary with palm oil if need be so when they are done blending it and also transferring it into a bag, the next step is for them to move it to this um, basement here where they would place some wood and the jack on it and then they will begin to just start pressing it so that the water would drain out. So you're just pressing it to make sure that the bag is very, very flat. And you can see the way it's tucking in the bag so that it doesn't the gari does not pour out of it and once he was done placing the bags of gari on top of the basement he placed some wood on it and also the hydraulic jack on it and the gari pressing process has officially begun. I was told that this process takes about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the amount of pressure that you place on it. And this process simply uses the principle of self weight and hydraulic press to press the bag of gari to remove as much moisture. You can see the amount of water that is coming out of this thing. And here I am just trying to see what it feels like to press water out of Gary. And guys, it was a lot of work. And I think after about 30 to 40 minutes, the Gary was already dry. So he started removing the hydraulic jack from it and also removing the wood from the Gary. And the owners of the Gary came to start carrying their bags of Gary to the section where the Gary would be fried. Let me show you what um, gari that has very little moisture in it looks like. So this is it when they've gotten most of the moisture out of it. And you can see how very, very, very dry. It feels as if like it doesn't have any moisture, it doesn't have any water again in it. It's so, 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 so dry. So I'll just transfer it into this wooden sieve used for sieving the gari. And all I have to do is to just go all around it like this. Man, this thing is not easy. Man is paining me because if you have Christian mother and come and be doing Gary, you lose you lose the fat in the hand and have muscle. <laughs> because this place is already paining me. Some it's not easy. Some people have that hand. Ah. Big. Maybe maybe it's just in their nature. Yes. So, but me, man, I've been I've been saving this thing now for like <laughs> I think ten minutes, and it already feels as if like I've been doing it for like one hour because. My hand is raining me. You, you can't use one hand and be flying it and be using the and be sieving that one. You can't do it. <laughs> so kudos to our mummies that are doing all this job for us. 
just to put food on the table. When you're done sieving it, this part is used for making um, elubo. Elubo is like um, amalao, like a flour that you can use for something like swallow. Some the Nigerians call it swallow and um, Ghanaians call it fufu. So you can mix this with um, corn and then blend it to become a swallow. You can use it for another type, another type of swallow. You can also mix it with a little bit of rice and then blend it to become swallow. So they'll just transfer this one, sun dry it later, and then um, blend it with any other thing. You can blend it alone into a fine powder, or you can also decide that you want to add something like dried corn or rice into it. So, so the next step is for us to start frying this one here. I can see how very, 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 very fine it is. So I'll just transfer this one into a pot and then we'll start frying it. The next thing is for us to start frying it. So you just transfer it into, into this and then you start frying it. I hope I'm doing it well. My back is paining me. <laughs> what? I beg. So I can use one hand. But I have to be melting it. If I spoil Gary, we should bring money. We'll go buy Gary for here today. <laughs> so guys, if you want to buy Gary, I'm going to leave the numbers of the sellers here. Call them and get very, very, very fresh Gary. So the Gary is done and I have semi successfully fried Gary. So it's like, see, ouch, she's hot. <laughs> so transfer it, Ari. So I'm just transferring it into a bowl. So the gari was left for about an hour or two to properly cool down before they started transferring it into a bag. And guys, I found somebody in this facility who sells gari that has been packaged. So if you're interested in packaged gari or packaged yam flour, the product is called ProDavad and you'll find the number of the seller in the description box below. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll be the first person to get notified every time I post a new video. I'll see you in another video very, very soon. Have a wonderful day ahead. Bye.